We are a church that loves the Lord and is determined to live for Christ. Amen. Let's give God some praise. First John, chapter number three, beginning with verse number 11. And I will be reading from the New Living Translation. This is the message you have heard from the beginning. We should love one another. We must not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and killed his brother. And why did he kill him? Because Cain had been doing what was evil, and his brother had been doing what was righteous. So don't be surprised, dear brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. If we love our brothers and sisters who are believers, it proves that we have passed from death to life. But a person who has no love is still dead. Anyone who hates another brother or sister is really a murderer at heart. Amen. And you know that murderers don't have eternal life within them. We know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and our sisters. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. Amen. May we pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, you are the most high. You are an all-sufficient Savior. You are the one true King. And we come now seeking you. Seeking a word from you. We thank you, Lord, for loving us and keeping us in spite of ourselves. And we ask you, Heavenly Father, to forgive us of our sins. And we ask you simply to speak, Lord Jesus, speak. Give us a heart to receive and an ear to hear. We ask you, Lord, to fall afresh on all your, all, all your followers on today. We ask you to continue to lead and guide and protect us. We ask you to give us focus, even when we don't desire focus. And we simply ask you, Lord, to give us a word. Hide me behind the old rugged cross. Let your people hear you and not hear me. Let them see you and not see me. For all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor simply belongs to you. So we thank you for simply being God and God alone. Amen. And it is in Jesus' strong name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. For a few moments, on today, I want to talk to you from the subject. Love is the way. Love is the way. And for a theme, I want you to grasp this as you deal with your brothers and your sisters and simply let them know that there's nothing that they can do to keep me from loving you. Well, come on. 
In the world, there are many struggles. There are many discouraging factors. But it is imperative, even in the midst of difficulty, that we do our best to love one another. It is important that we strive to love as we press our way consistently and intentionally to the next level Amen. that God has for us. Amen. In the time that we live in, we live in a me-first culture. Think of this ready. Relationships are simply not the connected state of being than they used to be. And instead of leaving us fulfilled and content, in the 21st century, relationships tend to leave us empty. They sometimes leave us devastated. And they leave us many times with unanswered questions. Relationships also leave us with emotional pain, even in the church. The pain is so strong that it changes our outlook on life. But in the midst of the questions, in the midst of the pain, I know it's hard, Ray, but we must be persistent in loving one another. Nobody said this road was going to be easy. In this world, friendships are few and resistance and hostility can be overwhelming. Are y'all with me? But we must be a people in spite of the obstacles striving intentionally to love one another and understand that we walk in love simply sister Millie, because we serve a God that is love and the Lord loves us unconditionally and he has loved us self-sacrificially when we've always been undeserving of it. And through it all, my brothers and my sisters, God commands us to love. But more importantly, we need to make a conscious and consistent effort to love. I know that there are frustrations. I know that there is doubt even today. But my brothers and my sisters, no matter what's said about you, no matter what's done to you, love is the way. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes, Dickie Woods, we don't feel like being loving. Amen. But love is the way. Yeah. We may feel like times we've been deprived, but love is the way. The situation may seem critical and you may be upset, but love is the way. Amen. You may find yourself at the kill in a state of emergency. You may be sitting on the sidelines, but love, love. is the way. Amen. The doctor may be saying that the situation is terminal, but love, love. is the way. Amen. Remember that God is love. Yes. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man or woman comes to the Father except through me. Hallelujah. Love is the way. 
Jesus is the way. And if we truly want to know what love is, let us simply look to the gospel. The gospel lets us know that Jesus gave his life for us. He died for our sins. Those things that we enjoyed doing when we were doing them. He died for our sins, but rose victoriously on the third day so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. We have to understand Deacon his belches that the path to redemption it was not easy nor was it pain free. If we examine Jesus' path to the cross it lets us know that Jesus was committed to the assignment. All right. Freddie, therefore, he was serious about the assignment. Tell your neighbor, play time is over. Not only was Jesus committed to the assignment, he was selfless in his motives. He didn't go around promoting his books. He didn't go around trying to get you to watch his TikToks. Amen. Jesus was selfless in his motives. All right. He wasn't concerned about the hearts of the thumbs up. The only thing that Jesus was concerned about was the assignment. Amen. And my brothers and my sisters, your assignment is what's most important in your life. <laughs> because guess what? Your assignment did not come from Hope Missionary Baptist Church. All right. All right. Your assignment did not come from Pastor Mosley. Your assignment comes from God. So on that day of judgment, you're not going to answer to HMBC. You're not going to answer to Pastor Mosley. You're going to answer to the Almighty God. Amen. So Jesus was committed to the assignment. His motives were selfless. And we understand that Jesus was self-giving. Check this out. Think it's glad. Jesus was willing to give all that he had so we could get what we need. Amen. All right. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you getting what you need? Are you serious about the assignment? Are you serious about giving God glory? But as those who have decided to make Jesus our choice. If we haven't done it, we must begin right now to take this thing seriously and do what God called you to do. And do the same Do it right now. Somebody may be depending on you to do it right now. Somebody may be needing and in great need for you to intercede for them right now. It can't wait till tomorrow. Because tomorrow just might be too late. We got to be serious about the assignment. It's not about how folks patting us on the back. It's not about the title that we accumulate. Because all the praise and glory belongs to God. The songwriter says, with my hands lifted up, and my mouth 
filled with praise. I'll give you the glory that is due your name. You deserve the honor. You deserve the glory. You deserve the praise. You deserve the accolades. All the glory, all the praise belongs to you. But not only must we be committed to being selfless, my brothers and my sisters, we have to start being self-giving when it comes to our ministries. I'm not talking about the men's women ministry, the women's ministry, our ministry that has been given to us by God. Amen. This lets me know that as believers, we have to be like Christ. We have to be willing to do what needs to be done. Are y'all hearing me? So our brothers and our sisters can get what they need. Amen. How many folks have missed getting what they need because we were doing our own thing? The thing a first job for my Bible studies is the fundamentals of faith. To make it clearer, the offer here is taking us back to the basics. I want you to understand that every now and again as believers, Brother Slater, we got to go back to the basics. Every and when we go back to the basics, the author gives us three basic principles in this book. We have to understand that the Bible is the roadmap to wisdom. Amen. For my note takers. Amen. It's the roadmap to wisdom. It's the roadmap to knowledge about God, relationships, and life. Amen. So if you're having troubles in your home, go back to the basics. If you're having trouble on your job, go back to the basics. If you're having trouble in your relationships, go back to the basics. Building blocks of your faith. Amen. Hallelujah. But not only is the author instructing us that the Bible is the roadmap to wisdom, but the author is letting us know in this book that we should be obedient. And we are to be implementing an obedient lifestyle. See, it's one thing to know you should be obedient. My God. It's another thing to be implementing the process. All right. Amen. Sister Regina, we must be implementing the process. And we know, the author lets us know that we must make a commitment to God to live a life devoted to Him. Notice what I didn't say. He didn't say, make a commitment to your church. Make a commitment to God and the commitment to the church will follow. Amen. Preach, Larry. I'm doing the best I can. See, the writer. The one just to be clear to you is addressing those who have made a commitment to Christ and are making an effort to be connected to Christ by faith. Furthermore, as we probably already understood, the overall theme of this passage is that we love one another. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say I love you. Tell your other neighbor, say, I love you. Love you. See, as believers, 
Sister Watson, there will be times when we don't see eye to eye. As believers, there are going to be difference, differences of opinion. Am I, am I with us? Amen. As believers, there will be frustration. As believers, there will be resistance. As believers, there will be doubt. There will be those who don't like the way that we move. There will be times of drought spiritually. There will be disappointment. We are going to see things from a different perspective. There are going to be struggles sometimes in our meetings. However, no matter what we endure, we are to love one another. Are y'all with me on today? In the text. Here we go, Deacon and Simpson. In the text. The author takes us back to the Old Testament. He encourages us to walk in love. And he lets us know that we should not be like Cain who murdered his brother Abel. If we look at the account in Genesis, it lets us know that Abel kept the flock and Cain worked the soil. When it came time to bring the offerings before the Lord, the Lord favored Abel's and he did not favor Cain's. This confused me. But the only reason that God won't accept our worship if our hearts are not right. So there's a possibility. We can come to church week after week, month after month, year after year, and what we do be unacceptable. Yes, sir. 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 I was telling thinking the Simpson on to yesterday, you got at least 10 canes in your life. Oh, y'all missed that. If you're living right and loving right and walking right, there's going to be some canes in your life. Amen. For the Lord, ask Cain. Why are you angry? The Lord simply lets him know. Listen to me closely. If you do what is right, you will be accepted. Amen. But if you do not do what is right, sin is lurking at your door. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, we have to be aware of the spirit of envy when we serve. And we must be aware of the fact that the enemy is present when we engage the work and even when we gather. Amen. Understand this, see, he cannot take you out of God's hand. But what he wants to do is destroy what HMBC stands for. Amen. Amen, lights. Amen. He wants to destroy our witness to the world. We have to understand. That the enemy, by way of our sin, 
desires to consume us. But it is our responsibility not to allow sin or the evil one to overcome us. Amen. Y'all hear that? It's not my responsibility for you, it's my responsibility for me. It is our responsibility. Point to yourself, say it's me. Amen. It's your responsibility to make sure sin does not get a foothold in your life. Mm. The best way to keep sin away is not to engage in it in the first place. The songwriter simply says, everybody ought to hold to his hand. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Everybody ought to hold on to God's hand. God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand. Well, see, Cain, he didn't choose to hold to God's hand. He chose to hold on to his anger. And it led him, Ray, to setting his brother up. It was a setup. Mm. Because he came to him. And he led him away from everyone else. Amen. Don't let nobody lead you away. That's right. He came to him and led him away so he could kill him. The author informs us that the reason behind the murder because were because his own actions were evil. Amen. And his brothers were righteous. Tell your neighbor, say, beware of Cain. This lets us know today that just because we are trying to do right doesn't mean that we will be liked and loved. Amen. Just because we are trying to build up the walls of the kingdom of God does not mean we will be favored by our brothers and our sisters. Amen. Just because we are trying to be a beacon of light in central Iceland doesn't mean that the people of central Iceland's kindness will rest upon us. Mm. However, in the midst of not being light, we must continue to walk in love. Amen. And we must do what's right. Yeah. In the midst of not being popular, we must continue to walk in love. And we must do what's right. Yeah. In the midst of being treated negatively, we must walk in love and do what's right. All right. In the midst of being overlooked yeah. and being rejected, we must walk in love. And we must do what's right. Yeah. Do I got five folks in the sanctuary that are willing to walk in love no matter what it looks like and do what's right? Amen. 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 So I want you to listen to me closely. What do we do when we are striving to live the best we can? And walk in love when the opposition attempts to lead us away secretly, whether it be spiritually or naturally, to be assassinated. Y'all got that? Amen. What do we do? We were striving to do our best and walk in love, and the opposition tries to take us out. Number one, there must be a commitment to learn. Y'all got that? 
the people of God must be committed to learn. Because understand, if we're going to be able to handle living in this world, the believer must make a conscious effort to study the word of God regularly so that there is an understanding of how to respond to contrary situations and contrary people. And after we learn, listen to me closely, after we learn, we just don't sit on our blessed assurance. Because if I'm correct, Jesus says, Teach them to observe. Amen. <laughs> we can't teach them to observe if we've never observed. All right. All right. We can't teach them to observe if we've never made the effort to learn how to observe. So there must be a commitment by the believer to learn. Let me throw this in parenthetically. The commitment to learn, Brother Brown, to learn the Bible, you and me, it might cause us to go back to the basis of education. Amen. All right. So we can understand prepositional phrases. We can understand nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, connecting phrases. It might take us back to the basics, but we got to do what we got to do so we can get what we need. Amen. And let me say this. As a believer, you are a lifelong learner. But it behooves us to position ourselves yeah. To be able to learn the word of God. Amen. But not only must we make a commitment to learn. We have to make a commitment to love. In this world. It's unpopular to be lovable. Even sometimes in the church. But we must also make a commitment to follow Christ and do our best to be like Christ. Like I said, it's unpopular. It is contrary to what the world teaches. But the Bible says we are a chosen people. The Bible says we are a royal priesthood. Yeah. The Bible says we are a holy nation. Yeah. The Bible says we are God's special possession. Yeah. Hallelujah. And we are all that. So we can declare. Do I got some folks that are ready to declare some things about God up in here? We declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his light. And we are commanded to love. Just because we are commanded to love even if we are not loved back. It may hurt, but we are commanded to love. You may be broken, but you are commanded to love. We may be mistreated, but God's people are commanded to love one another. So we make a commitment to learn, no matter what it takes. We must make a commitment to love. And also, in us being committed to love, we have to learn to become givers and not takers. God's people are givers. We're giving of our time our talent, and our 
treasures. But last but not least, this may be the most important one. We must make a commitment Amen. to the holiness found in Christ Jesus. Psalms 96 verse 9 states, Worship the Lord in the splendor yes. of his holiness. Yes. Not only are we to worship him, in the splendor of his holiness, we are to uphold the standards of his holiness. Amen. We should not only be observers of his holiness and receivers of his holiness, but we must do our best to reproduce his holiness. Amen. Amen. First Peter chapter 1, verse 14 through 17, and I'm almost done. As obedient children, mm -hmm. do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. All right. All right. But just as he who called you is holy, yes. so be holy in all you do. Amen. Did y'all hear that? Amen. Be holy. And all you do. You have to kill me holy. In all you do. Yes. But that might be a little tough. But a preacher last week told me to trust. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. And in all your ways, think you yourself to acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. So if there's some confusion on today about being holy, simply trust him. Because he said, be holy. Because I am holy. If we're going to strive for the holiness of of God. And we should be striving for the holiness of God. And as we focus on growing in God, we praise him for his salvation. We embrace his justification. And we travel the path daily of sanctification with a heart full of determination. We have to do our best, no matter what we can do. We have to do our best, Amen. no matter what we go through, to simply model his love. If we're striving for the greater, we have to do our best to model his love in our triumphs and in our defeats. We have to model his love. In the midst of unforeseen circumstances, we must do our best to model his love. In times of despair, yeah. we must do our best to model his love. When situations seem troubling, we have to do our best yeah. to model his love. When our emotions are trying to consume us. We must do our best to model his love. When commitment and love have been convoluted, we have to do our best to model his love. This means we have to make a serious commitment to stay connected to God. We must make a serious commitment to walk with God. We must make a serious commitment to praise our God. We must make a serious commitment to learn from God. We must make a serious commitment to have love for God. We must make a serious commitment to share the love of God. We must make a serious commitment to be like God. See, the songwriter says, 
Consecrate me now to thy service, O Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. Amen. If we're going to grow in the might of God, we have to look up with a steadfast hope. When we feel defeated, we have to look up with a steadfast hope. When you don't feel like keeping up, we have to look up with a steadfast hope. If you're broken, if you're hurt, yeah. if you're mistreated, yeah. if you're lied on, yeah. if you're talked about, yeah. if you're downtrodden, if you're in despair, yeah. when the chips are down, even if you're sick, yeah. they got to look up with a steadfast hope. Yeah, there is a name I love to hear. I love to sing. It's work. It sounds like music in my ear. Yeah. The sweetest name on earth. It tells me of a Savior's love. It tells me of his precious blood. It tells me of his compassionate heart. It tells me of a gentle redeemer. It tells me of an all-knowing great teacher. It tells me of a constant provider. It tells me of a consistent peacemaker. It tells me of a covenant maker. It tells me of a covenant keeper. It tells me of an all sufficient savior. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. If I love Jesus, then my obligation yeah. is to love you. If I love Jesus, my obligation yeah. is to serve you. Great is thy faithfulness. Yeah. Morning by morning, through mercies I see. All that I have, thy hands yeah. have provided. Yeah. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord unto thee. So what do we do when we are striving to live the best we can and walk in love and the opposition attempts to lead us away secretly, spiritually or naturally, to be assassinated? Number one, it must be a commitment to learn. Number two, there must be a commitment to love. And number three, last but not least, we must make a commitment to the holiness found in Christ Jesus. Amen. Do we love Jesus on today? Hallelujah. Do we really love Jesus on today? When we think about the sacrifice, do we love him? Are we committed to him? Yes. So if we love him yes. and are committed to him, yes. simply love one another. Yes. Tell your neighbor, love is the way. Yes. Tell your other neighbor, say, love is the way. Yes. Tell yourself, love is the way. Yes. The doors of the church are open. Yes.